Right, let's have a look at question five. So in the coordinate diagram below, 16 points are marked with a dot. Louise picks one point at random from the 16 points marked with the dot in the diagram. She then finds the equation of the line that goes through this point and through zero, zero. Find the probability that Louise's line has a slope that is greater than one. Okay, so she, she picks a point. So, so let me pick a point at random, okay? So that one there. She picks one point at random marked with the dot. She then finds the equation of the line that goes through this and zero. Oh no, that didn't go through very well, did it? Okay, something like that, okay? Um, find the probability that it has a slope greater than one. Okay, um, slopes, let's think about slopes. Okay, so the bigger the slope, the bigger the slant, okay? So I have two lines, three lines there, one, two, and three, okay? Three has the smallest slope, so it'll have the smallest value because it's the flattest line. It's not that steep, okay? Line two is bigger and line three has the steepest, steepest slope, okay? Now, it can also work negative. So this one has a much steeper slope than this one, albeit down, okay? So when do you have a slope then that is, is one, okay? Well, you have a slope that is one when the rise over the run is, is equal, okay? So in other words, if I mark him one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? A slope of one is when you go through zero, zero, and then you'll go through the point one, one, okay? Or you go through the point two, two. Okay, how do I know that? Okay, let me show you using the slope formula first. So let's let's find the slope of zero, zero and the slope of one, one. Okay, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, so m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, one minus zero is one, one minus zero is one. So that's a slope of one. Okay, now you might say, that, yeah, yeah, that's okay because it's one, one. But let's take the point 10, 10, for example. Okay, um, and let's see how does that change things. Well, the slope formula is always y2 minus y1. So y2 is 10 over y1, x2 minus x1. So that's gonna be 10 over 10, which is also one. Okay, um, I could of course change this, and as long as it's the same, then I'm gonna get a slope of one. So it's eight over eight, which is again one. Okay, so if you go through zero, zero, then if the points are the exact same, you get a slope of one, exactly one. Okay, now this didn't ask for when do you get a slope exactly one, it says when is it greater than one? Okay, so greater than one means if I think of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so on the top is my y's, the difference in y's, and on the bottom is the difference in x's, okay? This is often called the rise, because you're going up and down, and then this is called the run. Okay, so therefore, that's why slope is also called rise over run. Okay, so when do I get a value that is less than one or a fraction, okay? Well, I do that when my run, the difference in my x's is greater than the difference in my y's, okay? So for example, if the difference in my y's is a one and the difference in my x's is a two, 
then I have a slope less than one. OK, now let me give you an example of that on the on, on, on the picture. OK, if the difference in my X's is two, so that means I come over two in my X's and remember, I'm doing it all from zero, zero now. That's my starting point. So I come over on my X's, but I only go up one. OK, so if I draw a line through that point, then that has a slope equal to a half. OK, in the same way, if I draw it through this point, it'll actually have a slope of a third. If I do it to this one, it'll have a slope of a quarter. OK, why? Because I'm only going up one. I'm going to show you this point here. I'm only going up one on my rise. Remember, it's rise over run. I'm only going up one on my rise, but I'm coming over four on my run. So that's how I can say without using the formula in a quick way that that has a slope of a quarter. Okay. So where has a slope greater than one then? Well, that's when my rise is bigger than my run. So in other words, my rise being here, if I take this point, okay, my rise is two, my run is one. So that's a slope of two. So that point's good, okay? So I'm going to leave him blue. Let's have a look next at this one. Okay, well now my rise is three and my run is still one. So he's good. And of course he's going to be good because my rise is four and my run is still only one. Okay, so they're all good. Right, let's come in a line then. Okay, let's have a look. Now he's not good. Why is he not good? Because he has a slope equal to one. Why? Because the rise is one and the run is also one. Now I say rise and run, you're going to get the same answers if you try the slope formula with any of these, okay? And that's perfectly fine. I suppose it's just quicker to do it with rise over run. So that's equal to one. It didn't say equal to one, it says greater than one. So that's why we don't count that point down the bottom. Okay, let's go into the next row then. Let's have a look at this point. So my rise, I'm going to put a zero on it. My rise is one. My run is two. OK, so that's less than one. But that's definitely no good. Let's pick a different color for him. No, not you. Go him in green. OK, and then let's do slope greater than one when we're in blue. OK, so the green is no good. We also determined that he was no good and he was no good, OK, because they were all fractions. OK, let's have a look at this one. So my rise is two, my run is two. So two over two is going to be equal to one. OK, so he's no good. OK, in the same way, this one will be no good because it's a rise of three and a run of three. So that's equal to one. And the same for this one, rise of run, rise of four, run of four. So that's equal to four. Or sorry, it's equal to one. So that they're all the slopes equal to one. And you can see them, they run there along the diagonal, okay? So they're easy enough to see. Okay, now let's have a look at this point. My rise is two, my run is three. Okay, so two over three is two thirds. So he's going to be less than one, so he's no good. Let's have a look at this one here, a rise of two and a run of four. So two, two over four or a half, no good. Let's have a look at him, a rise of three, a run of four. So he's no good, he's less than one. OK, so you can see the diagonal line here is important. Because you see in the pattern, if it's under that, it's less than one. 
if it's over that, you're going to see the slopes are greater than one. OK, so let's try this one. The run is three, the rise is two. So that's three over two. So he's good. In the same way, this one, he is a rise of four and a run of two. So that's four over two. So he's good. And then finally, this one, a rise of four, a run of three. So he's good. OK. So find the probability that Louise's line has a slope greater than one. So probability, the definition for it is the number. So that's maths language for numbers, the hash symbol, the number of successes over, see too much, have I? over the total number of outcomes. So that is the definition for um, probability. Okay, so how many successes have I? How many blue circles? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six over my total number of outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So six over 16 or three over eight. So that is the probability of getting a slope greater than one. How many of the 16 points marked with the dot in the diagram are a distance of exactly five units from the point zero, zero? Okay, so distance, okay. Um, and if you think about coordinate geometry and you start talking about distance, then this is what you're talking about. It's the length of a line or the distance. Okay. And, and when, when you get used to this formula, okay, um, what it does is it takes two points it squares them and then square roots them. Okay, so we want the answer to that to be five units. Okay, we want the distance from zero, zero to be exactly five units. Okay, um, so how, how, is, how are we gonna figure this out? Well, zero, zero is gonna be one point X1, Y1 and our other point is going to be x2 and y2, okay? So let's sub in and let's see what we get. So x2 minus zero to be squared plus y2 minus zero to be squared um, is five units, okay? Or I have x2 minus zero is just x2 squared plus y2 squared, the square root of it, is equal to five units. OK, now, how do we get rid of a square root sign around something? Well, you square both sides. OK, so if you square both sides, what you end up having is you square that side, square that side. OK, what will end up happening is the square and the square root sign will cancel over there and you end up with x2 squared plus y2 squared is equal to five squared, which is 25. Okay, and then you have to start thinking about points, right? How do you get 25 from this? What numbers makes up 25? So when you add two numbers together, how do you get 25? Okay, now it's not just any two numbers, they have to be square numbers, okay? So for example, what are my only options here? Well, I have one to four, okay? So I have, if you think about the coordinates of this point here, he's one, one. I have one, two, I have one, three, I have one, four, all the way up to four, four. So the biggest point I have is four, four, okay? So if I start looking at some of the options that's here, I have, in other words, one squared plus If I pick this point up here, 
So he's one comma four, okay? He's X and Y, okay? So I have one squared plus four squared. Okay, so one squared is one, four fours are 16, so that's 17. So it's not one and four. Okay, let's look at two and four. Let's try that. Which if we go back is two, four, it's this point here. So we're looking for the distance between zero, zero and all of these points. And we're trying to find out, well, which distance gives me a distance of five. Okay, that's what we're doing. So two and four, so two squared plus four squared, two twos are four, four fours are 16, so it's 20. So it's definitely not two and four. Okay, let's look at three and four and let's see where that brings us. So three squared plus four squared equals three. Threes are nine, four fours are 16, that's equal to 25. Ah, that's good. Three and four is a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Okay, and then four, four. Can you see that four, four then is going to be too big? Because I'm going to have 16 and 16 to be 32. So the magic numbers are three and four, okay? Now, this is where you might mix it up. Are you, oh, sorry, I need to change him back to a three, okay? So three and four works perfectly fine. So that's a good point. Now, don't forget then that you can have four and three as a point, okay? So we also have four and three as a point. So just like three and four was good, the distance between that and that is five, four and three will also work, okay? So let me do that one in red here. I can have four squared plus three squared, which is 16 plus nine, so it's 25. So remember for addition, it doesn't matter which way the numbers are. Um, but for labeling points, it does. So I have two points that are good, three and four and four and three. Okay, so the answer to my question is two points. Okay, now, how would I show the answer to that? Well, I would show this. Okay, and how I got down to this, if you can think of it. Okay, and you may not think that that might just be too matsy for you to write down on paper. And if it is, it doesn't matter. Okay, but you somehow have to show maybe one or two wrong points and then show two right points. Okay, if you can. If you can't, put down the answers because I think it would be easier for people to come up with the answers to this one than it would be to actually explain how you got them. So that was question five.